I think I want to emphasize in that when, when a woman calls and says, I'm, having, um, I'm, I'm in this relationship, I don't know what to do about it, we don't tell them they have to do one thing or another. We don't tell them they have to go and get a restraining order. We don't tell them that they have to leave the relationship. What we do is we, we present different options. And we say, you know, these are the things that you can do. These are available to you. These are things that if you want and you're ready to do that, we, have, um, we can help you get a restraining order. We can help get you to the shelter. We can help get you, you know, we can, we can talk about safety planning, but if a woman is, is not ready and she just needs to talk about what's happening in her life, just somebody to talk to, we'll do that too, you know. Uh, we'll talk about, you know, um, what are you going to do if it happens again? That's part of the safety plan. What can you do for yourself? Oftentimes a woman in the midst of being in, in, a, in an abusive re relationship hasn't thought through what they can do for themselves and the safety planning is just kind of like preparing her if it happens again what are you going to do who are the friends that you can call you know what are you going to do with your children what are you going to do at that moment are you going to call the police are you going to call a friend can you go stay at your mother's house you know um, these are just ideas for them to start thinking about because when they're in the midst of a, a violent incident, they're not thinking, they're reacting. And if they pre-thought some of these things, it'd be a lot easier when it's happening, say, oh yeah, you know, we talked about safety plans and I, I, I think when, when I said this is going to happen again, I think I'm going to just call my friend at work because she said she would help me. You know, something like that. It it's, could be as simple as that, it could be more complicated. So I can imagine one of the fears maybe women would have, and, and they're under a lot of stress at that at this point, would be to coming in here and being told what to do. Yeah, and what that's you're not. What you saying is that you're no. really giving them options yes. about how yes. they can respond yes. more effectively. Yes, and each woman is different. I mean, each woman is different in terms of where she is in her relationship, how how bad the, the relationship might be in terms of the battering, what kind of battering she's suffering. Um, I think it's really important also not to interrupt you, mm -hmm. apologize, but I think it's also important that um, that we are here to present options for that person, um, but it's also really important to point out that no matter what her decisions are, that we will support those decisions uh -huh. and yes. we will be there for her each and every mm -hmm. time that she changes mm -hmm. her mind or, or makes a, decides on a different option, we will be there. Right. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. There are no wrong decisions, you know. I, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, you said if, if men um, call us, what would they, you know, what could we provide? One of the things we talk about are some alternatives. I, I spoke about that a little earlier, but we, through our groups, talk about some of the things that men can do when they get angry and need to just you know, do something before they get violent. And one of the things is, you know the old count to ten routine? Mm -hmm. Sometimes getting some space from the incident, you know, the counting to ten is not a bad idea. Sometimes people need to count to a hundred, you know. But you know, getting away and thinking about what's, what the argument is about, be, than just reacting and hitting is one of the things and that was is like taking a time out you know time out isn't just for children time out could be used for adults who just need to take a breather from you know the intense argument or whatever the situation is take a time out and think about what's happening and and then when they kind of cool down come back in and they can discuss it rationally. But when you're angry, you're not thinking and you could do things that are really hurtful. So one of the things we talk about is taking a time out, getting cooled off, giving yourself some positive messages to think about. You know, not, oh, I'm gonna kill her. I'm really angry with her, she, it's her fault. It's like, okay, now, um, this isn't a real big deal. Let's think about it. You know, people make mistakes and mistakes can be redone. Let's think, you know, Talking positive things, you know, I can do this, you know, I can do this without getting anyone hurt, mm -hmm. you know, those kinds of things. Sometimes taking a walk, jogging, you know, something physical to get that adrenaline back down again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would really be the most important thing you would say to a woman or a man if they come to see you with this kind of problem? What can you really, what do you say to them? Um, there's two things that I would say. Um, um, and that's first of all that you are not to blame and second of all that there is support out there and you're not alone. 
And for men, I would say um, that there's help. If you're getting in a situation where you need to talk to somebody, there are places you can call. The Island Crisis Helpline and the Family Crisis Shelter can provide someone there to, for you to talk to. If you need somebody to talk you down from your anger, you know, that's helpful. But that um, each person is responsible for their own actions. And when you decide to use violence in an angry manner against people you love, then it's your responsibility. You need to take some, some decision making about what you're doing and it's not caused by someone else. And until you understand that and take steps to help yourself deal with that anger and the violence that comes out of that anger, then the family will continue to suffer. Okay. Yeah, this is wonderful. I really appreciate the work you're doing. Yeah, it's thank a, you. It's a difficult problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if a woman comes to, comes to you, what what can she expect? What sort of steps would you, what would she be going through in order to deal with this kind of a crisis? I think one of the first things that we want to talk to women about is the fact that they're not at fault for any kind of uh, violence against them. So many women um, have been told over and over again by their partners that it's their fault, that they are the ones that uh, cause their partners to be violent against them. It's kind of a blaming the victims kind of syndrome. You know, if you had cleaned the house better, or if you had cooked corn instead of beans for dinner, or if dinner was on the table exactly at 6 a 6 p.m. when he walked in through the door, you wouldn't have to, you know, I wouldn't have to punish you for not doing all these things. And the kids were clean and bathed and their homework was done, you know. Um, there's no need for you to get punished. So they feel like everything, um, every, every uh, abuse that they have suffered is because they did something wrong. Well, um, that's not true, and that's what we try to do. We emphasize that from the very beginning. Um, if someone is still in the household um, where this violence is taking place, um, we usually talk to the women about doing safety plans. Um, that would be um, consistent with teaching children how to dial 911 uh, at a very early age, um, being aware of the resources in the community, such as um, the Family Crisis Shelter at 322-7233. Um, that's the number here in Kona, Hawaii. Um, also to be aware of the number at Alternatives to Violence, which is 326-1607. Um, to um, prepare herself by getting any important papers um, all in one location, um, having code words with friends or family, making um, neighbors, friends and family aware of the situation and employers aware of the situation, um, trying to build on their support system. Um, if an incident occurs, we always encourage pe um, the women to um, call 911 and make a report um, and then try to seek shelter in a safe environment, whether it be with friends or family or the shelter um, or whatever uh, options are open for her. If a man call, if a man is in a, in a situation, and I really, um, having worked with men in groups, I think men don't like what they are like when they start hurting the people they love. But at the spur of the moment, they don't know what else to do. They don't know that they have al alternatives to um, being violent with the their, their partners or with the children or whatever the situation is, um, we are available for people to call. Our shelter services um, are available. We'll, we'll, we're willing to talk to men who might be in a place where they just need to talk to somebody, otherwise they'll lose it, you know. We are willing to talk to men and that, and, and so our crisis line at the shelter, the 322 safe number, is available for men to call. Um, if they need somebody to talk to. The Big Island, uh, the Island Crisis Help um, has a 24-hour crisis line. They will also talk to men um, if there's something going on and they're feeling really bad about what they did. Um, that's another place they can reach out and call. Our Alternatives to Violence program has staff people who work with men on a regular basis and they can call um, here also. Unfortunately, our, we have office hours, so they need to call between 8 and 4. But 
we have groups for men. Um, if they're willing to try to do something about their behavior, they can enroll in groups. Um, we charge a sliding scale fee based on a man's ability to pay. But in there, uh, men can learn that there are different things that they can do besides taking out their anger in a violent way against the people they love. And the same goes for the women as well. There are um, group sessions available as well as individual sessions. Um, if they could, if they would just call either the ATV number or the Family Crisis Shelter number. Yes, one of our newest. Um, services that's available at the Family Crisis Shelter is um, the fact that we are now doing groups for women who need to deal with their anger. And uh, this is something that we have never done before and we are trying to respond to a need where women are saying, well, you know, I get angry too. I get angry at him. I get angry at the kids. What can I do with my anger? So that is something that we are working with. There's a lot of shame and guilt involved with this issue of family violence. And it, it's a problem in our community. It exists. Simply to acknowledge that the problem is here in our families, in our community. And to deny it, to avoid the problem, it will not solve it. It will not go away by simply ignoring it to support everyone that has been wounded and has suffered as a result of family violence. We are not taking sides. We are not pointing fingers. We are not blaming one group of people. We are simply trying to get close to the wound in our own hearts that's been inflicted by this uh, enormous and difficult problem. So without blaming, we are simply trying to get close to the suffering that's taking place. And it's our, our feeling that when we can do that, when we can bear witness to this suffering in our hearts, then there's a possibility for healing to take place. As an act, as a healing act. To educate and raise awareness about the nature of domestic violence and the positive values of nonviolence. Let's have unity with diversity in this beautiful Polynesian island. I know you and me could get along happily like so. Let's have unity with diversity in this beautiful Polynesian island.